Hi everyone, Mr. Kowalski here. Here is part four, the final episode of the series on intervals. Now we've made it to eight semitones apart from the original note. This interval is the minor sixth. It sounds like this. Examples of this interval can be heard in the instrumental hook of Yeah by Usher. That's a perfect fifth and a minor sixth. And the guitar hook of Ozzy Osbourne's Crazy Train. That's another perfect fifth with a minor sixth. Our next interval is at nine semitones, the major sixth. The alto and baritone saxophone, as well as an E-flat clarinet, are transposed by a major sixth. Common examples of the major sixth are My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean, My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean, or the NBC theme. Oops, I played that wrong. At 10 semitones apart, we have the minor seventh. This interval is rare to hear used melodically. The minor seventh is more commonly used as chords, um, used in chords such as the dominant seventh that helps us lead into a tonic chord. So if you hear it wants to resolve to you can also hear a minor seventh in the opening line of somewhere from West Side Story there's a place for us. At one semitone higher at 11, you get the major seventh. This one is even more rare to be used melodically than the minor seventh. The easiest way to find a major seventh is to sing or play an octave, which we'll get to next, and then go one pitch down. Major sevenths are also used in chords to provide a different color. Our last interval in our one octave chromatic scale is the perfect octave. Notes that are a perfect octave apart share the same letter name. So this is a C that I'm playing. That's also a C, but one octave apart. This interval is one of the most stable sounding. You can hear this in the first two notes of the Wizard of Oz classic, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Somewhere. That third note, the next note, actually has a major seventh relationship to the first note, like we mentioned in the last interval. Somewhere, oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But just because we reach the octave doesn't mean we have to stop there. Intervals keep going into ninths, tenths, elevenths, and so on, and they still follow the major, minor, perfect labels. Um, for example, that is a major ninth. And we just keep going. Now that we've learned intervals, we can start talking about scales and chord types, and you will see how intervals are integrated into those concepts. So look forward to that for the next couple videos. All right, question of the day for this week. Um, final question of the day for this week. Out of all of the intervals we've learned, I want you to pick one and tell me something about it. Is there an interval that made you cringe or one that you think sounds amazing? Let me know. All right, I'll see you next week for the next videos.